Hi there, everyone. Today, Amy and I will be talking about feminist criticism. Please note that we will be speaking primarily from a Eurocentric and North American perspective. There's definitely some overlap to other areas of the world, but each country and region has their own challenges, successes, timelines, and trailblazers. Feminist criticism is one lens that people can view literature, media, and resources. While looking at literature through feminist lens, there's often intersectionality that occurs such as gender identity, race, social economics, and more. It's both a mirror and a window to the stereotypes and cultural practices. That is, it both reflects and shows the cultural assumptions of a time and a place. Feminist criticism also shows how literature, in all of its modes, can shape a culture and a society. According to Naminsky, feminist critics, critics use a wide range of methods, including deconstructing the way that women characters are described, especially if the author is male, deconstructing how one's own gender it influences what they read and how we interpret the text, deconstructing how women auto, autobiographies and biographies of women are treated by their subjects, describing relationships between literary texts and ideas, and the ideas around power, sexuality, and gender. It also critiques the patriarchal or women marginalizing language such as the universal use of masculine pronouns he him and we also see that when we hear things of countrymen or firemen noticing and unpacking differences in how men and women write style for exi for existence where women tend to use more reflective language and men more of a direct language for example she let herself in versus he opened the door it also reclaims women writers who are uh, marginalized and undervalued and reclaiming female voices as the valuable contributions to literature. There's still a really strong need for feminist perspective. We still live in a world that continues to be sexist and patriarchal, and it's important to have feminist perspectives. Feminist criticism can help us better understand the inequities and address the barriers and oppressive gender relations. Please note that the images are all satire and from a site called Man Who Has It All. It's a spin on gender roles and feminism where comments that are usually made towards women on a regular basis are applied to men. Tyson shares some common approaches in feminist theory. The fact that women are oppressed by the patriarchy in many different areas and that in every domain where patriarchy reigns, women are othered. They're marginalized. This is clear across all Western civilizations and much of this is rooted in religion. All feminist activity, including feminist theory, has been the ultimate goal to change the world by prompting gender equality. And gender issues play a part in every single part of our human experience. Please note that Tyson does say that biology determines our sex and she lists it as a binary, but we now know that it is not strictly binary. There have been lots of different waves that have occurred in feminist criticism. The first wave emerged in the late 1700s, championed by authors and activists who advocated for safety, voting, and greater political influence and property rights. Mary Wollstonecraft's 1792 publication, A Vindication of the Rights of Women, argued for social and economic equality between the sexes. New Zealand became the first nation to permit some female adults to vote. The wave culminates for American feminists in the 19th Amendment to the Constitution that secured voting rights again for some females. A criticism of the first wave is that it promoted rights for white women only. In the second wave, which spanned the 1960s and 70s, prompted by increasing levels of education for women, the economic imbalance that emerged after the Second World War, reactions to global conflict like the Vietnam War and the Civil Rights Movement. In 1963, the feminine mystique was published and sold 3 million copies in just three years. In 1966, the National Organization for Women was founded. The second wave feminism also advocated for greater bodily autonomy for females and the right to control their reproductive rights. 
In the third wave, which emerged in the 1990s, was a reaction to the greater media saturation and academic discourse. Females who benefited economically and politically from the first two waves were looking to challenge the portrayal of women in art, media, and literature. This third wave was also more inclusive than the previous two and began to acknowledge the contributions and roles of Indigenous, Black, and people of color, queer women, and females from the Global South. Two key players were Kimberly Crenshaw, who coined the term intersectionality, which highlighted how forms of discrimination converge and overlap, and Judith Butler, who first argued that sex is biological and gender is a performative social construct. There are many that theorize that we're now in the fourth wave of feminism. This wave is said to have started around 2012 and is continually evolving to this day. One catalyst for the fourth wave was the violent rape and murder of Jodi Singh in Delhi. A second argument is that in 2014, there were violent threats made towards female journalists and video game players who vocally oppose the stereotypical images and roles for women in the expanding video game market. With the election of Donald Trump after his many inflammatory remarks about his opponent, Senator Hillary Clinton, and against women in general, led to a massive protest called the Women's March. Several similar women's marches were held around the world to call attention to pervasive, systematic, anti-female discrimination and violence. Finally, the Me Too movement took its name from an organization founded by Tarana Burke and became a hashtag that spread quickly on social media. The movement aimed to draw attention and potentially legal charges against men who commit, committed or allegedly commit sexual-based crimes. While the fourth wave is more inclusive to our BIPOC and queer communities, it's criticized for leaving many trans women and non-gender conforming women and people on the sidelines. There have always been women throughout history in all places that stand up to challenges and challenge the status quo in order to work towards equality and draw attention to the barriers that females face. Listed below are some of the strong trailblazers. Feel free to check them out as each of them can inspire you. Feminist criticism looks to examine texts and issues through femcentric lens. This concept can have wide disparity in meaning as the concept of what it is to be female is so vast and complicated. In a contemporary academic setting, a scholar can look at the literature, for example, and identify themes of gender, sex, power, and influence. By using intersectionality of sex and race, or sex and gender and sex and queerness, deeper levels of understanding can continue to be found. The primary aim of feminist criticism is to root out the patriarchal thinking, which again benefits all genders, and to challenge society views of femininity. Amy and I also just wanted to take a couple moments just to point out that patriarchy, much of what feminist critics look to address, hurt not only females. This system also harms men and all genders. This means that the responsibility towards working towards being a more equitable society belongs to all of us. Tyson provides many prompts to view different texts using feminist criticism lens, such as what's the relationship between men and women? What's the power dynamic between them? What are the roles of the different characters? And how do the different characters portray different traits and show masculinity and femininity? It also asks us to question different pieces of how women are portrayed. For example, what is their work? How is it valued? What does it say about their creativity? There are many prompts out there to help us get thinking deeper about the text that we're reading through a feminist lens. Thanks everyone so much for watching. We can't wait to hear your comments and your questions um, in the Moodle. And Amy and I look forward to reading and responding to them in the future. Thanks so much everyone.